Hello, it's Jeff Christian of CPM Group. I'm recording this at 4 o'clock in the afternoon on Monday, the 8th of April, for release and posting on Tuesday, the 9th of April. I want to talk about the economic threats of U.S. federal deficits and debt. One might say, well, why don't you stick to your expertise in gold and silver? And I would say, well, part of my expertise extends to macroeconomic trends. And also the federal deficits and debt are integral to gold and silver markets uh, and prices, which is one of the reasons why I have some things to say about it. I hope to not be too long, but I think that I need to go very slowly through this so that people can understand it. I think most people who watch our videos understand these things, but there are any number of um, other people who really seem to have a tough time about it. Federal chairman said that deficits and debt are unsustainable. And a lot of gold investors and really the gold promoters uh, have been making a big deal out of this statement by the Federal Reserve Board chairman uh, that the federal deficit and debt are unsustainable. That was Jerome Powell. It was in a 60 Minutes interview on Sunday, the 4th of February. Here's some of the quotes from the federal chairman. Financial markets are vulnerable to further shocks from the U.S. budget deficit. Prudent monetary policy is not sufficient condition for a stable non-inflationary fi uh, financial climate. Fiscal policy must also play a role. The importance of credible deficit reductions cannot be overemphasized. This is what the federal chairman said. That was Fed Chairman Alan Greenspan in Dece on September or December 7th, 1987. Yes, he said that. On the 1st of December, he gave his Humphrey Hawkins testimony and he discussed the unsustainability of current federal deficits, spending and debt that was rising sharply and the question and answer period. And then he reiterated it in a speech six days later. At the time, the deficit was a hundred and forty-seven and a half billion negative, and the debt was two point four trillion, having risen from less than a trillion six years earlier, seven years earlier. The debt and deficits were unsustainable in 1987, at a fraction of what they are now. $1.3 trillion deficit, $34 trillion debt. Paul Volcker had warned Congress and the administration before Greenspan replaced him as the Fed chairman in 1987. Greenspan warned Congress and the administration repeatedly throughout his tenure at the Fed. Almost every time he gave a Humphrey Hawkins uh, testimony to the Congress, um, he raised the issue that fiscal policy needed to be reformed to reduce the deficits and pay down the debt. After he retired, Bernan uh, Benjamin Bernanke and then Janet Yellen and now Jerome Powell have all continued to make those warnings. And the Congress and the administration basically haven't done anything. Dick Cheney famously said when he was vice president, deficits don't matter. He was wrong. And yes, Jerome Powell said it too, on 60 Minutes, on the fe fourth, February 4th. They are unsustainable. They need to get going. They can be fixed. Deficit spending and debt on the part of the U.S. government, other governments, consumers, corporations, and everybody else are risks and problems. I don't want to minimize that. And I don't want some troll or other person saying that I said that deficits don't matter. That was Dick Cheney. Uh, but they have been blown out of proportion in the minds of many, and they're not really well understood. Investors and voters need to realize that the U.S. government's deficits, spending, and debt, federal, state, and local debt, these are fiscal matters caused by governments. They are not monetary issues caused by the Fed. Politicians love 
for investors and voters and gold snake oil salesmen and phony ex-CIA analysts and pundits and other people to blame the Fed for the problems that the politicians have created and refuse to correct. It's standard human behavior. Politicians do it all the time. Voters fall for it all the time. The problems with deficits and debt are not catastrophic. And you'll notice that I always say deficits first, if I can remember to do that. That's because it's the deficits that are the most important problem, but I'll get to that in a second. They can be catastrophic, but there are also some relatively painless ways they could be effectively managed and reduced, if not entirely eliminated. Back in 2010, 11, 12, we came out with a, a report called Five Easy Pieces, five relatively painless policy changes that the Congress and administration could make to restore budget surpluses and pay down the debt over time. In 2023, late last year, we issued a report to our clients, a market alert, in which we outlined seven easy pieces that could restore budget surpluses and start to pay down the debt. The sad reality is that while deficits and debt can be contained and reduced with relatively painless ways, governments, the politicians, and the people who pay for the politicians' campaigns do not have an interest in or the political will to take the necessary actions to do that. I used this term the other day. I didn't coin it. Somebody else coined it. Mega numerophobia. It's the fear of high numbers. $34 trillion in debt. This has to be unsustainable. Yes, so was $2.4 trillion in 1987. Now, the deficits are the main problem. The debt is a problem, but it's also a symptom of the deficits. These are annual budget deficits in the United States uh, government, red are um, Republican administrations, blue are Democratic administrations, the gray part are the projections from the Congressional Budget Office going out over the next 10 years. I heard some snake oil salesmen talking about the $3 trillion plus deficits that are projected as far as the eye can see into the, 19, into the 2030s uh, on the internet last week. Actually, the CBO's projections over the next 10 years have the deficits really way high, more than $1.5 trillion per year, rising to more than $2.5 trillion. But it's not persistently and consistently over $3 trillion. A little bit of reality and honesty goes a long way in accounting. But these are the deficits. This is the problem. The deficits compound into the debt and the debt has risen sharply. From the time of George Washington's presidency through Jimmy Carter, the cumulative debt built up by the U.S. government was less than a trillion dollars. Starting with the tax cuts in the early 1980s and uh, increased defense spending, uh, we started to see government debt rising, and it's risen over and over again there's plenty of blame to go around. Democratic administrations, Republican administrations, Democratic and Republican Congresses all have contributed to the problem. And as I said, it's sad because there are some politically relatively painless ways that you can do it. But one of the things that's happened, and it really started happening in the late 40s, early 50s, is the Defense Department decided that every congressional district should have either a at, at least one military base or defense contractor so that every congressperson who might say, you know, we could reduce the defense budget, stands there and faces people saying, wait a second, this is an economic um, wellspring for your congressional district. Do you really want to close that down and lose those jobs and lose that tax base? It's just the way the game's played. Again, no one's dumping U.S. treasuries. You have to understand the nature of debt. U.S. federal debt issued by the Treasury 
is considered one of the least risky debt instruments that one can invest in. As a result, what you're seeing is that investors are shifting their assets from more risky debt and equity into treasuries. The amount of U.S. Treasury uh, securities held off offshore rose 10.5% last year to a record $8 trillion. Governments and offshore investors are not dumping treasuries, nor are onshore investors. Now, while treasuries are attractive, you have to understand, because of their lower risk rate, the U.S. federal debt is about 120% of U.S. real GDP. On a global basis, more than total so debt, sovereign, public, and private debt, all put together, is more than 300% of global GDP. And all of that, except for the $34 trillion held by, uh, issued by the U.S. Treasury, is more risky, almost all of it. There is some that is ad, has a credit rating equal or even better than the U.S. Treasury because the U.S. Treasury uh, debt was downgraded in August of 2011. So you really have to worry about that lower credit rated private debt, the sovereign debt from other countries, the private debt, the corporate debt. That's really the bigger place. The U.S. debt, the Treasury debt, will be the last place where you see problems. That's all I have for now. Um, we issued our gold yearbook last month. You can go to our website, cpmgroup.com, and in the store you can order it, buy it, download it. It's an ebook. We are working on our silver yearbook, which we'll issue in the middle of May, and then our platinum yearbook will come out in the end of July. You can go to our website and read all kinds of free reads, see videos, and you can send us an email at info at cpmgroup.com saying, this is my exposure to precious metals and commodities. How can CPM Group help me understand these markets, avoid being duped by people who tell you things that aren't true, and maybe manage your positions? We can help you by advising you how best to manage your exposure to precious metals and commodities. That's all I have. Take care of yourself. Take care of those around you. Do something good for the world. I'll talk to you on Friday.